excited to, to introduce our next speaker. Um, Avik Waditkar is a ninth grader at the Auti Nash International School in Houston. He is very interested in astronomy and cosmology and hopes to one day follow his passion to college and a career. For fun, he currently hosts a YouTube channel called The Essence of Reality on the subject of astronomy and other general sciences with a bit of humor and animation. He has also recently started his own astronomy club at his school. So join me in welcoming Hop. to his three laws of planetary motion. And I'll talk about my channel, just a shameless plug at the end. <laughs> Too much time to animate. So that was just a little animation, just a little fun for you. Um, yeah. And first we come to Johannes Kepler. Kepler was born in the 1500s. And he was really big into astronomy. And in this day, things, subjects like astronomy, philosophy, cosmology, were all pretty mixed up. So he, he was also a big Catholic. And he believed that the heavens had to reflect some of God's perfection. And then part of this perfection was planets running around in circles. And they're perfectly spherical planets because, frankly, circles are cool. And so by analyzing another astronomer's data and spending the money that wasn't necessarily his, he figured out that or orbits first weren't just perfectly circular, they were more elliptical. And the orbital speed isn't constant, but it is predictable. As in, a planet gets faster and slower, but within a pattern. And then finally, the, there's a relationship between how long a planet takes to orbit and a measurement of their elliptical orbit. The last one's the least intuitive, but it's very helpful for things like ratios. And to this day, it's still a major astrodynamics tool to many astronomers, seeing exoplanets or planetary motion. And so Kepler's first law was that planets move in elliptical orbits. And one cool thing about ellipses is that there are these two points called foci, in which the distance between those two foci to any point will always add up to the same, any point around the, around, around the ellipse, which is shown in this illustration. And so an ellipse also has these two parts, a semi-major axis and a semi-minor axis, displaying um, what, would a what a radius would be for a circle. And those two are the foci. One special thing about the foci is that, as for a planet, a, the star would be at one of those two foci. And the other, it will just be empty space. And then there's also an equation for the eccentricity of a planet's motion. If the eccentricity is zero, then it's just a circle. If it's zero to one, then it's an ellipse. If it's exactly one, it's a parabola and shoots off into space. If it's more than one, it's a hyperbola and also shoots off into space. And Kepler's second law is that planets trace out equal area and equal time. So each of those little splices is each is a tenth of a second in this animation, but in real life it could be a month, a year, ten years, whatever. But each one of these slices has the exact same area as each one of the others. So one of these thick ones over here has the exact same area as one of these thin ones over here. This also means that planets have a very predictable motion as they get faster and slower again. And Kepler published this in, in one of his books in 1609, just the first two laws. So those two areas would be equal. It would just be shifted in an equal time. And Kepler's third law is the least intuitive. 
it says that the time it takes for a planet to orbit squared is is proportional to the semi-major axis cube. It's very confusing and not really easy to grasp at usual because there's no physical way to conceptualize it. And so the easiest way you can see is through just data. Here are all the planets for the solar system. And this isn't the actual data as you need um, the semi-major axis and this is just the average instead because since planets' orbits are elliptical, this would be if they were circular. And so the ratio isn't perfectly one. For Earth, it is one because AU and year are defined as one for Earth. But for the rest, they're within a margin of error that you can clearly see a pattern. And then finally, Kepler also uh, had to do some math. And so he looked at Newton's laws of planetary motion. One was the centrifugal force the force that keeps planets in an orbit. If centrifugal force is too much, it'll spiral out into a vast space. If gravity is too strong, then it'll just spiral into the sun. And so these two have to be perfectly equal. If you just shift the equations around a lot, you'll get you'll finally get that the radius cubed, so the semi-major axis cubed, is proportional to the period squared. And then there's this little amount that is proportional to and that changes for each planet and each star, but you can the, you can clearly see that they're completely proportional. They're completely connected to each other. So, in summary, with a lot of patience, determination, and money that certainly wasn't his, Kepler discovered some really necessary rules di dictating a planet's motion that planets revolve around the sun in an elliptical orbit, they sweep an area out in an equal amount of time, and the square of their orbital period is proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis. These are all incredibly important even today for astronomers who look at exoplanets, for astronomers who look at actually any two orbiting bodies, since these hold true for anything orbiting anything else. Any questions? And just a No, we need more students with your attitude enthusiasm. and enthusiasm. Do not let anybody stray you in there. Absolutely. And as for Mr. Newton, he's also speak, has spoken at another astronomy, astronomy club which is more centered in Houston. And we've actually talked there as well. He works in Bel Air High School, which while I'm not with, we've also planned some projects together. And I hope to see him again in the coming month, at least. So I can, I'll make sure to say hi. Thanks. Yes. I just have a quick question. You mentioned that the rotation of each planet, it's not constant, but it's predictable. So when is it moving faster around the sun versus slower? Well, it usually moves, it moves faster when it's closer to the sun and, farther, and slower when it's farther. In Earth's case, the ratio between the two slower and, and faster are about 15 to 60, which Kepler somehow realized was also the ratio between two musical notes Fa and me, and so being the poet he was, he described that Earth is held in the sway of famine and misery. <laughs> <laughs> should be the first one. I just talked about various astronomy concepts. Videos are just 10 to 15 minutes long. And sometimes I talk about other things, but I'm mainly trying to focus on the astronomy part. Um, if you have any free time, feel free to look it up, watch some of the videos, please subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions? I just wanted to find out your interest in astronomy. I use them in my other work, in structural dynamics, vibration, gravity gradient studies, landing dynamics, 
God can say, they're all related. So even if you're not purely in astronomy, there's still applicability of this to a lot of other stuff. Everything's connected. Okay, so all there was comment, I'm going to get a comment too. I have two kids in college, right? right? Okay, so when you're looking for majors for our two kids, I was looking at unemployment for different majors. I was shocked to find out the majors in astronomy have zero unemployment. I don't know what they're doing, but the kids that majored in astronomy were 100% employed. Wow. Okay. There you go. But it's not in education. I'm not saying what they did. I'm just saying they were 100% employed, which was not true for any other major. Okay. Anything, any other questions, comments, concerns? Yes. I have a question. Um, about, about how long did uh, Kepler work on this? Um, to come up with these laws? Was it years or decades? It was or? definitely years. He worked on it from, I believe, 1601 to maybe 1620s. Well, that's a long time. It was. Okay. That was awesome.